Hi, I'm Allison Clements and I'm with the Health Services Foundation of the South Shore. I'm joined today by Ben Carver, who is a lawyer here in Bridgewater with Patterson Law, but also a member of our board of directors with the Health Services Foundation. Thanks for joining us again today, Ben. Oh, thanks for having me, Allison. And we've been talking about wills and the power that they bring. One thing that keeps coming up when we chat about things is common misconceptions. So sometimes people, like one that I came up with was, I'm not worth enough money, why do I need a will? Or, you know, what if I go, well, the government's just gonna take my money anyways. So those are you know, some fairly common feelings and thoughts. And the very first thing I would say is that regardless of how much you may or may not have, uh, my view at least is that it is important to have a will if for no other reason than to have your say about who is going to be in charge of looking after things for you after you've gone. Because if you don't do that, basically there's just legislation that dictates who would be entitled to step in and administer your estate. Oh, well, that doesn't sound comfortable well, at all. <laughs> the thing about it is, is it may or may not be the people who you would choose. Mm. But by having a will, you get to really have your say about who that person would be and how they would be asked to go about it. So if for no other reason, I would suggest it is worthwhile just to have your your say and your, your choice about who would look after things for you. The other thing is, I know you'd mentioned that sometimes people may not feel they have enough to mm. make a will. And what I would say about that very simply is that, first of all, things can change and they can change very quickly. Mm -hmm. It may be that you may not have a lot at the moment, but your circumstances could change in the future, maybe before you get around to making a will. Or for that matter, you may have, um, well, you may have assets that you were unaware of, such as life insurance sometimes. Uh, often, just through your, your work or employment, you might have life insurance or other benefits that uh, you might not be aware of, but which could you know, actually result in you know, payment to your estate. And it would be important to have your say about how those, those assets would be distributed at the end of your lifetime. Um, the other thing is, if you have um, you know, children or even pets, mm. having a will allows you to express your wishes and also give directions about who would be um, responsible to um, assume guardianship of your children and, and also to, to look after any pets as well. Interesting. I didn't think about the pet portion. Is, is there any... That, that's a whole other topic. That's a, <laughs> that's a whole other video. <laughs> but is there is there another mis any other misconceptions that you've run into? So one that's fairly common actually is a belief that if I don't make a will, everything I own will go to the government. And that's actually not the case. Again, there is actually legislation that dictates what happens if you don't have a will. And basically what it does in a very sort of rigid and formulaic way is it basically says that if you do not have a will then certain members of your family are entitled to share in the division of your estate mm -hmm. and in many cases that becomes quite complicated because if you don't have an immediate family it goes all the way down through the branches of your family tree and, and some have many branches <laughs> they do and oftentimes we end up searching for beneficiaries uh, all over the globe Wow. So it can complicate things uh, quite a, a great deal. And you know, more than that, it's very rare that, I shouldn't say that, it's not rare, it, it's not always the case that your wishes will be exactly the same as what that legislation provides. Hmm. So, And in fact, in many cases, they may be altogether different. So having a will allows you to you know, have your say again and, and really choose you know, what would happen and how things would be divided and shared at that time. Another thing that that I, I would mention is that uh, more and more couples these days are in common law relationships. And it's important to note that in those circumstances, uh, common law partners are actually not included within the um, the provisions of that legislation. And that would be actually a good misconception so, that people and, probably think that they are. And that's right. Quite often that there is a, a belief or a, a, an understanding that uh, a common law partner is um, in, entitled to, you know, to share in the division of an estate. And not to say that they are not or that they, they shouldn't be, but under the current laws here in Nova Scotia, they do not have the same 
rights as a married couple, for instance. And so in those situations, it's all the more important to have a will that, that includes your partner if, if that is your wish, um, simply because the legislation doesn't do it on its own. And so particularly in those situations, it's really all the more reason to consider making a will. Yeah, have it be the way that you want it to be as your final wishes. All right, thanks so much, Ben. Again, your will is your power, so take the time and make one. Thanks. Yeah.